Hallelujah. Let us get ready to join in the Holy Communion. Let us take the element of the bread high above our head, being reminded this, that this represents the body of Christ, crushed because of our transgression. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's take a moment to thank Him. Thank what He's done in our life. Not just the salvation He's given us, but everything that He's done in our life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your body. Thank you. Let us take this in the remembrance of Him. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And in the same manner, let us raise the cup high above our head. This cup represents the blood of Jesus shed on the cross for each and every one of us. Let us take this, not for granted, but gladfully. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 join in this holy communion to be reminded of how good you are and all the sacrifice that you've done on the cross. Thank you, Jesus. As we continue with our service today, continue to be with us, Lord, so that we can learn more about you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everyone say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Now you can really sit down for a while. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, today we're going to uh, discuss about in our weakness. Tell the person next to you in our weakness. In our weakness. I don't know about you, but I do have a lot of weaknesses, and I have my weakest moments as well. And this is not just talking about your weakest moment, like when I try to stay away from the sweet, or the bread, or all the good food whenever we all go out and eat, okay? Um, but it goes deeper than that. Weaknesses in terms of when we have our salary cut, Maybe when we lose our job, or maybe when we go through hardships in our workplace as well. That's our weakest moment as well, because we're easily tempted to get angry and to do things that is not biblically or things that do not represent Christ's love. Okay? So there's a lot of weaknesses or weakest moments in our life, and we can't um, run away from these things. We have to face on. Tell the person next to you, face on. Okay. But what I want us to be reminded today is that we're different compared to the people out there in the world. Because for the world, whenever you are in your weakest moment, then that's negative. Okay? Your weakest moment will be your monster. Um, your weaknesses will be your failure. Okay? Well, sometimes weaknesses lead us to failure. But we all have seen what God has done through the people in the Bible. Through their failures, God rise them up again. If we hold on to Him. So when we have Jesus, the difference between us and the world is that when we have Jesus, all these weaknesses, they don't always have to mean negative. They can be a positive thing. Sometimes even they are negative, but they will lead to something positive from the Lord, if you believe, say amen. amen. Okay? So there's a lot of things that we must learn when it comes to failures or weaknesses that we have to face in life. But today I'm going to highlight three things only when it comes to our weaknesses. So let us read from the Bible. I'm going to invite once again, very quickly standing up, once again, hey, it's, you know, it's, it's an exercise, you know, you get to be healthy, right? Sit down, stand up, sit down, stand up. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Are you guys ready? Let us keep this. One, two, three. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Let's pray. Lord in heaven, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Because you 
tell us that just because we are in our weakest moments doesn't always have to be negative because we know that you are in control throughout whatever situation we have. So today teach us, Lord, about our weaknesses, about the moments when we are in our weakest time. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everyone say, Amen. 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 Please be seated. So there are three things based on the 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, that I want to share to you when it comes to our weakness or our weakest moment. The first one is, let's move on. The first one is, in our weaknesses or in our weakest moment, God's grace is enough. God's grace is sufficient. Christ is enough. If you believe, say amen. amen. Now the Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, it says, My grace is sufficient for you. God is promising to you and me that His grace is sufficient, is enough for you and me. So it's not just going to be us singing, Christ is enough. It's not just singing. It's applied in our life that Christ indeed is enough for us. And this happens, funny enough, when we are in our weakest moment. Why? It's got nothing to do with God. All these three points got nothing to do with God. It's more about us. Okay? Because with God, if we follow Him, if we are in Jesus Christ, if we have Jesus our God as our God, as our Lord and Savior, it's not that God's grace is only sufficient when we are in our weakest moment. His grace is sufficient when we are also strong, when we are in our highest moment too, okay? But God is highlighting the fact that His grace is sufficient when we are weak is because most of the times when we are strong, when we are capable, when we have enough, it's actually never enough. I'm going to give you an example. When you have a lot of money, your salary is high, never get cut and everything. Every time there's new things coming out that you like, for instance, makeup, or clothes, or mobile phones, you will always try to buy a new one. Now I'm going to remind you, don't get into this habit, okay? A lot of people, whenever there is a new mobile phone coming up, they will always rush to get that new phone. And their old phone is not even broken, right? Sometimes some people could even have like two, three mobile phones. I'm guilty. I have four mobile phones. But guess what? Two of them are broken. If you look at the screen, there's like a couple of lines already here. And if I get it fixed, it's more expensive than I buy a new one. And a lot of things don't work out anymore. So what happened was, I bought a new phone. And then not long after, my other phone started acting up really weird as well started not working well. So I had to buy a new mobile phone. Now, normally, people would just throw away the broken ones, right? But for me, yes, I do have four mobile phones. It's actually because I have two mobile phones and I still keep my two old phones because they're not broken in terms of I can just throw them away. Even though for the world, they would throw them away right away. But I still can use that for my other WhatsApp, or I can use my phone to take a photo at least, unless it's the camera part that's broken. But my camera part is not that broken. Actually, funny enough, the camera part already started getting broken uh -huh. last month or two months, remember? And I still keep it. Sometimes I get even upset with things when it's not working out. And Pastor always reminds me, well, you know it's already broken, but I still keep it. Because for me, it's, it's, it's still precious, church. So, I'm not asking you to always keep your broken stuff at home, okay? What I'm trying to get a message across is that be content and be glad with what you have. Because, yes, those two mobile phones that I can just throw away, they're broken. For me, they're broken. But I can only imagine for many people actually, in the Philippines or in Indonesia, they would still use that to communicate with people. But if you compare with the world, Whenever there's a new thing coming out, they will keep on buying the new things. And their phones are not even broken. They're not content because they do have the money to buy all these things. But if you take a notice, if you don't have that amount of money, 
even with the old style phone, they would appreciate that so much. They would keep it, they would treasure it, they would try to make sure that it's not broken. Because if it's broken, it's not easy for them to get a new one. Whereas for people who have money, they are easy to just get a new phone, makeup, clothes, whatever. Whatever they actually still have, the old ones that are still useful. So that's the reason why in our weakness, God's grace is sufficient. Somehow, we can appreciate more all the things that we have in life when we are in our weakest mode. When we're healthy, we don't care about not eating too much sugar, we don't care about not eating too much salt or other things. But when we are judged by the doctor, the doctor declare that we have high blood pressure, diabetes, then we always have right? Those weakest moments that are supposed to be negative suddenly push us to live healthier. And a lot of other things in life as well. Only in your weakest moment, when you're on your down, you're on your low, your lowest even, that you can appreciate what you have. Suddenly, everything is enough. Rich people often have a lot of food on the table. Their employees, their helpers, would make sure food would always be ready on the table. And if you work for a rich family, then it would always be gazillion of food on the table. But then funny enough, rich people are the ones that don't eat too much. Food are on the table, but they're always saying, Ooh, I don't eat meat. Food are on the table and they always say, Ooh, um, I cannot eat uh, a frozen food or whatever, you know. But when it comes to the people who have much less um, money or financial background, even if you prepare white rice for them, pastorally for this, it's a miracle. It's a big thing already. You know? And not only that, sometimes they didn't even have rice. And they had to live with potatoes, sweet potatoes, and so on. Yes. And, but for them, that's enough. For them, it's like, ooh, you know, this is great, you know? Suddenly they appreciate. Thank you, Jesus, for the sweet potatoes. But for people who have sometimes, even rice is there, meat are all there, that's not enough. Car, for example, if people have money, they have a lot of car, but somehow it's never enough and they buy another one. And I'm going to ask, how many people actually drive the car in your house? Oh, only three of us. But you have ten cars, who's driving it? Oh, well, one person drives two, three, four cars sometimes. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. They do have the money, so why not? But what I'm trying to get a message across today is that be content. Whether you have those things or you don't have those things, be content. Have the habit of, it's enough, you know? If you have a little more money for you to have more, then why not? Praise God. It's not a sin to enjoy things when you are able to. But to force yourself to always have the mentality of it's not enough, it's not enough. You don't realize that you are actually being unappreciative with what God has given you in life. So from now, let us look at the things around us, whether it is food, our health. For example, now I do have my uric acid is going higher, obviously age-wise, I can complain, but I prefer not to. Now I learn to be content. I mean, it's age. I mean, look at a car. A 30-year-old car, obviously, is different with a 1-year-old car. I'm a 40-year-old car. So, obviously, I cannot expect my life and my health to be as I was when I was 20-year-old. So, I should be grateful that my uric acid is not that bad. So, I praise God. 
ice, for example. Now I started, sometimes I need my glasses also. But I should be content because among my siblings and my cousins, I'm the only one that still don't wear glasses full time until now. So whatever it is, don't compare yourself with people, but compare yourself with yourself and be content with what God has given you in your life. Whether it is about your health, about your finance, your salary, but don't compare with people, you know? Mm -hmm. Compare with yourself and be content. It doesn't mean you can't ask more. The Bible says ask and it, you will be given. But you start not by asking God to give more. You can, but make it a habit of telling God you're grateful with what you have. And of course, you can always have your prayer by saying, but if you have a little more, God, can I have a little more? I'm sure God, our Father, wants to hear us telling Him about those things. But if every time you come to Him and say, God, I want more, God, I want more, God, I want more. Imagine if you're a father and your children will come to you and keep on saying those, those things without a thank you. I take delight in Sergio every time I just give him He's going to teach you. He's like, thanks, puppy. <laughs> I just give him like, sometimes even. Um, just to, to make him not bored at home, um, I would come home and I would bring something, some food or whatever, but it's not like toy. It's not something specifically for him. So I don't actually have anything to give him. What I would do is I give the bag. Sometimes the plastic bag or the carton bag, it looks pretty nice. So I give it to him. I say, God, this bag is for you. And he's just all that happy, like, oh, thanks, puppy. It's actually rubbish, really. <laughs> but imagine, okay, imagine, I'm so happy for him to just say, thanks, puppy. How much more our Father in Heaven would be when we could tell him, thanks, my Father in Heaven. And trust me, he would never give you rubbish the way I give rubbish to my son. <laughs> He would never. That's the difference between earthly father and heavenly father. Earthly father will try whatever it takes to make sure that he don't shout, he don't scream at home, just give, just to take his attention away. But God, our heavenly father, wants all attention from us. We try to take attention away, but not our father. Okay? Because for us, we can only handle so much of activity, so much of hyperactivity like him, <laughs> so much of energy, but God is almighty and he can take everything, okay? So let's make it into a habit. Every time we see our life, our situation, then let's have the mentality of Christ is enough. Let's read this little verse. Second Peter 1 verse 2 says, Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. This is the key. Only when you have true knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ, you will be able to be content. If not, you will fall into the trap of the world as well. You will follow your friends. Because, see, the thing is, when you have your salary cut, I mean, the world would complain. That's normal, right? And it's not nothing. It's, it's not wrong. That's, that's something normal in the world. If you get your salary cut, then you complain. You get treated unwell, it means, right? But we are a Christian church. There's a difference between us and the world. Okay? Once again, it doesn't mean you cannot complain. But you have to look at the reason. Maybe you get your salary cut because your boss really do not have the capacity. If they don't have the capacity, then, then you just have to realize what you need to do, whether you stay on by having your salary cut, or you leave, you go back to your country or you change employer you can't say oh but i like working with my employer because you know it's so nice i've known them for many years already everything is already good but i don't want my salary to be cut well if their reason is because they really don't have that capacity anymore you can't do anything you just have to make a decision whether you stay on with a salary or you have to change everything Okay, so 
only through the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ that we will be able to think like that, that things are in us. If we don't have the knowledge of Jesus Christ, nothing will be in our church. Even when you have a lot of money, things will actually get worse because you have all the ability to buy everything. So it will never be enough for you. New car, new mobile phone, new makeup, new whatever coming out, then you will have the mentality that you need to buy always. And you need to be on top. You need to show people that you have the best and the latest. But when you have the knowledge of Jesus Christ, you don't need all these things. Because you know all these things are temporary. Only Jesus is permanent. And this happens with the church also, unfortunately. Pastor was reminding me about this stand-up comedian who's Christian in Indonesia that put in his, his uh, comedy, um, one of the content was quite funny but true. He said, because he's Christian, so he used a lot of like comedies about church. And he said, you know, all the church members these days, they must be issued church membership card. Because nowadays, there's too many church members that keep on jumping around from one church to another. Whenever there is, I'm going to change to uh, 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 a Filipino artist. In Indonesia, Munika would know this. Uh, Agnes Monica. So, okay? So, in Indonesia, Agnes Monica is really massive, okay? In Filipino, it's very Valenciano. Quite famous, right? So, he said like this. Because there's always a lot of these church people that every time there's this big revival meeting with maybe a famous pastor and you will see them there at that church. And then next time there is this special event with Agnes Monica or Gary Valenciano and then you see the same people there as well. And then whenever there is other stars in another church then they will be there as well. Or maybe another famous pastor in another church then they will be there as well. Or maybe a famous worship team in another church, or a bigger church, or a better church. Not like Jem Macau, who still keeps on <laughs> borrowing other people's place, and even today we don't have the pulpit anymore. Then they keep on changing. There are these types of churches. Well, I praise God because you stick through it until today. Amen. You should give credit to yourself because you couldn't find some of the places that look better instead of this dirty table. You could have gone to other place that has better pulpit, more people for you to hang out and a la moba. But you don't need this. So you should give credit to yourself. That's why from time to time I keep on asking you how many years have you been with us? Whenever I ask you, give credit to yourself because that's how many years you stick yourself with this situation. You could have gone somewhere else actually, but you stay here. You know why you stay here? Because you know that you're growing. And you know why you are not tempted? Because you know the knowledge of God. If you have the knowledge of God, people can even tell you in a very diplomatic way. Trust me, there's going to be a lot of people from other churches that go, you know, in our church, the worship team is so good. In your church, only use guitar. Oh, in our church, have drum, have this happen. Oh, in your church, how many people? Only six people today in this <laughs> In our church, there six. That's the the minimum. The last time we have six. There will be. There will be a lot of people that will approach you. And trust me, those people who don't have the knowledge of God truly, even they call themselves Christian, it will be so easy to move. Now, let me get this straight. Every church, for as long as they believe in Jesus Christ as God and Savior, they're a good church. But the key is not just good church. The key is about where God puts you. So just because that church is big, it doesn't mean that's the place where you're supposed to be at. What you need to realize is that whether you're growing right now or not, if you're not growing, then move. Change your part. But if you're growing in that part, no matter how ugly that pot is, don't change the pot. Because the plant will die. But only people who really have the knowledge of God that will be able to be content. Oh, my pot is so small. My pot is so ugly. But that's okay. Because Christ is enough. The Bible does not say the church is enough. The pastor is enough. Or the movie stars that attend the church are enough. The Bible says, Christ is enough. God says, my grace is sufficient to you. 
So that's regardless your situation, whether you're in a big church or small church. When you have this knowledge, you will not keep on jumping around. And that's why I'm sure all of you here right now have this knowledge, if you believe say amen. But let's not just do it for church walls. Everything in our life situation, be content. Whether it is about your health once again, your economy, anything, your situation, your work, relationship, be content with this. Before you start thinking anything negative, anything bad at all, even if the things are actually bad, just start by saying, thank you, God. Thank you. Because you know what? Yes, things may look bad, but it doesn't mean the end will be bad. Sometimes God allows those bad things to lead us into the direction that He wants to lead us. Amen? Uh, before I move on, when uh, my mom passed away in Bali, uh, I remember before she passed away, of course, when we were struggling, we kept on screaming, in Jesus' name, you know, uh, money, come back, you know, whatever. Because she was not declared that yet. But the moment the doctor declared that she's gone, that's it. Of course, we follow the Holy Spirit, but I didn't feel the Holy Spirit telling me to call her to rise from the dead. So, I just made this prayer. The moment before the doctor said she is gone, we still keep on praying. In Jesus' name. But the moment the doctor declared that she is gone, and I confirmed with the Holy Spirit, yeah, she is on her way back to the Creator, then it's not my right to say to God, Stop! <laughs> Rise no. I felt that this it was her time. She was so tired. She you you all knew her. She was drinking medicine for the diabetic and everything, you know. And so the moment the moment uh, she uh, the doctor declared it was a woman, she declared that my mom was gone. I remember I went to uh, her feet and I said thank you to her. I knew she couldn't hear it anymore, but I knew that Jesus would tell her. I said thank you for everything. And then the second thing I did was I thank you. I said, God, thank you. And he was thankful for me. He was hurtful. I didn't want to let my mom go. But I knew that it was the best for her. And it was the best for us as well. So I said, God, thank you. Even though I'm still painful, but I thank you. And then slowly I realized, you know, first when we came back from all the funeral and everything was all done, we started throwing all her stuff away. And that's when I realized the first things that I threw away from her back were her medicines. I took out the medicines and I'm like, I threw to the rubbish bin. I said, praise God, indeed. She does not need this anymore. She is totally healed. And then, coming back here, every time there's a little lab break, we have to go to do the test. I can only imagine my mom having to go through those things again and again, you know? And then not only that, the fact that traveling is so complicated, this says, and you know how much she loved traveling, church. She didn't know that it was going to be like this. I didn't know things were going to be like this complicated. None of us did. But God knew. So God knew the best. So at that time, I praised God that the moment she, the doctor said, she's gone, I praised God. Even I was still painful, it was painful for me, I was still hurt. I just said, thank you, God. I'm content. At least I had enough years with my mom. I thank you. And I compared myself with you, actually. I remember talking with Pastor. You know, I have praised God. You know, I mean, they had to lose their mom at a very young age. But even compared to you, sis grace. See? There's always going to be other people who seem to be going through a harder situation. But actually, the point is not the harder or not situation. The point is when we have Jesus Christ. Christ is enough. And if God allows us to go through that situation, it means we are able to go through that. Amen? Amen. The next one. In our weaknesses, God's power covers us. Let's go to the Bible verse right away. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and will be with us. This is God's promised church. When we are weak, God will give us rest. When we are weak, God will cover us with his power. But let me get this straight. Let me go, go back again to um, our main Bible verse today, just to link this up. God's cover us, uh, God covers us with His power. Yeah, so 2 Corinthians 12, 9. 
The Bible says, Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That's the very next point. So, His power rests on us when we are weak. Let me get this straight also. It's got nothing to do with God. It's got things to do with us. Same thing with the first one. Because, let me underline, in fact, God's power will cover His people whether we are weak or we are strong. Okay? So when we are in our highest moment or our lowest moment, His power covers us, if you believe, say Amen. But the reason why God highlights this in Corinthians, that His power covers us when we are in our weakest moment, is the fact that most of the time, people who are in their highest moment, most of the time, people who are in their powerful stage, they don't seem to need Jesus. Most of the times, people who come to church crying is because they are going through some hardships in their life. In our church, you don't get to see that. We're a small church. That's one of the good things I like about this church because you can always tell people coming in and out. But if you go to a bigger church, there are always some people in the church that you only see when they come to church because they have prayer. And you can see, the moment they walk into the church, you know, almost for sure that whenever there's an altar call, they will go to the front. Maybe their business is struggling. And the moment the business picks up again, then you can also almost guarantee that they'll be gone from the church again. Well, this is human nature, okay? It's true. Just because they're lazy to go to church, doesn't mean they will lose heaven, okay? Because we all know that heaven we have because of our faith in Jesus, regardless how many times we go to church. That's true. But we can always keep our faith by growing in Him, and we can always grow in Him when we keep on going to church, okay? And so it doesn't mean that when we are in our highest moment, God, His power does not cover us. His power covers all His people. And whatever situation that we are going through but the point is many times people who are powerful they don't want to be covered they feel they are able they resort to their own source they resort to their own thought they resort to their own mind and ideas and everything most of the times people who are in their weakest moment that's the time when they look for god now, of course, let us be reminded, don't look for God only when we are in our weakest moment, okay? Always seek Him. But that's the fact, unfortunately. Human nature, we always seek God when we are in trouble. And that's the reason why God allows troubles to take place in our life as well. Because when we are in trouble, that's when we look for God. And He wants us to seek Him. And so He allows troubles, weakest moments, weaknesses to take place in our life as well. So that from time to time, we keep on connecting with God. We keep on looking for God. And once again, it doesn't mean that when you're successful, then God will not cover you. No. The point is, whether you realize or not that God's power covered you, or you realize that all your success is because of your knowledge, or because of your smart move, if so, God will allow things that you don't like to take place in your life so that you realize that it is because of God, not because of who we are, but it's because of who He is. Okay? His power covers us. And so let us be grateful whenever we are in our weakest moment. It's not always negative. Sometimes it's good. Why? Because that's the moment where we get to realize that God's power truly covers us. His power truly surround us. Okay? So, before we move on, let me get this straight again. It doesn't mean when you are in your highest moment or in your powerful moment, His power doesn't cover you not. Okay? So don't worry. Says Michelle, other else, you've done your courses. You're on your way to your success. On your way to your success. Don't worry. When you're successful, his power will continue to cover you. But you need to always remember that. Because when you forget it, 
sometimes you forget not because you want to forget God, but it's because of your activity. So many times Christians say, I can't because, sorry pastor, I can't go to church because I'm so busy, you know, with my activities. I always differentiate when it is things that really you cannot control, then you can't do anything. For example, you work for somebody, and that's your time allocation for work, then what can you do? But you, if you're given the choice by your employer, which day do you want to choose? We don't know. The church will never know. Whatever excuse you give, we will accept that. But God knows. The, the day you were given that option by your employer, hey, which one do you want? Do you want Saturday or Sunday? Um, I just take a Sunday lah. So I will take the Saturday day off. So on Saturday, you go and hang out somewhere else. So you sacrifice the Sunday because you want to have more time on Saturday. Okay? Or if you're the one that's making the schedule, then you know that you can schedule yourself to be off on Sunday, but you don't. The church will always accept your reason, but God knows the truth. Or when you're successful. When you're the boss, obviously, if you're the boss, you're the owner, you decide whatever that you want to do. But because thinking that I need to be there, because if I'm not there, I cannot, I cannot trust my workers. If you cannot trust your workers, you should not start your business at all. To start with, that's the worldly thinking, by the way. And the spiritual thinking is this. Why would you need to think so much about your workers on a Sunday when you give your time to God, knowing that God will take care of your workers if they do something bad, God is going to take control of everything. You know this. So, things can happen when you're successful, okay? And you forget that God's power is the one that cover you. God's power is the one that makes you successful, okay? And that's the reason why God sometimes will allow you to go through hardships so that you realize again that He covers you with His power. When you are powerful, most people are not grateful with the little things in life. But when you are in your weakest moment, that's when you realize that God is powerful and God helps us. Amen? The third point. Uh, let's get back again to the, the main bubble verse. And the last point from 2 Corinthians 12 9 is my power is made perfect in weakness. So that's the third point, church. In our weakness, God's power is made perfect. It's the same thing as well. It's got nothing to do with God. Whether we are in our weakest point or our strongest point, His power will always be perfect. Let's read the Bible verse for the third point. Psalm 18.30 says, As for God, His way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in Him. God is perfect in all His ways. If you believe, say Amen. Amen. So, it's got nothing to do with God. Whether we are in our highest moment, strongest moment, or our weakest moment, lowest moment, His power is perfect. But the, the reason why God points this out, that His power is made perfect in weakness, is that most of the times, when we are in our highest moment, we take things for granted. We don't, somehow, we don't see that God is at work. Like I said, when you have a lot of money, food is always going to be on the table. Yes, of course you pray. Thank you, God, for the food. In Jesus' name, Amen. But deep down inside, you know that you don't really see the food as something so precious because they're always there every day. As opposed to people who don't have money to eat. Pastor was telling me, so you should listen to Pastor's story. I'm very inspired by her story. Every time she came home, sorry, I'm going to use your story box. She came home, and if she saw like maybe a fish or whatever, oh, I'm going to praise God. Or if she sees the sweet potato again, she's just like, oh, sweet potato. Yeah, yeah. yeah see? But nevertheless, even she said that from her story, I could tell she was glad that there was at least the sweet potato there. And this is what happens with people who don't have. Whenever there's a little thing, everything is miracle. But people who have, usually, not all, okay, 
praise God, not all. And we're, the reason why we learn about this today is that we have the intention not to be like that, okay? But many of people who have, including Christians, who are in their strongest point, not that they don't remember God, but they just somehow look at the things that they have and they take things for granted. It's, it's there because I have the money. I have the money because I work. And I have a good job because I studied hard. I want to ask you, you could finish your study with the money he gave you. It's my parents, of course. Yeah, I know, but he got a job because he told me. Yeah, because he, 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 he's smart, okay. So everything gets back to smartness. I want to ask you, who gave you your brain? I didn't give my brain to Sergio. I have my own brain. He has his own brain. God gave him his brain. He's smart. Yes, we have the effort to teach him. But if he doesn't have it in him, no matter how many times I try to teach him, he would not get it. He gets it because Jesus gave him that gift. Again, we do not compare with other people. He's good at singing and memorizing. Not that good at painting. Drawing is very terrible at the moment anyway. So we don't compare with people, but all of us, we have our own specialties and expertise that God gives, okay? And all these things, in our weakness, that's when we realize that, oh, this is so cool. When we are in a state where we're high, we're powerful and everything, we have a tendency to look at things for granted. It's meant to be that, you know? For example, in Macau, for us, the Macau residents, we do have the benefits. And the majority of Macau people, unfortunately, would always feel that they're entitled to have all these benefits because they have been receiving this for many years already now, ever since the industry is booming in Macau. And so something like COVID came, they didn't think of this. Everything had to be cut here and there, and we started hearing about it. Me and Pastor, we always try to think about it, and we always say that it's hard to be in, in the position of the government. <laughs> because imagine one, one, one portion of people want this, the other portion want this, the other portion want this. It's so hard, you know? So if, it, if, if, if we can just be a smaller part that, that become content and feel grateful enough with whatever that we are given, then at least it, give, it gives less burden to everyone. I'm not sure God wants us to do this. He wants us to be grateful enough. And this can only happen when we are in our lowest. This current situation right now makes us realize that everything should not be for granted. Everything. The, you know, my cousin uh, from Australia asked me the other day, so you're going to do a good job now, right? And I told him it's, it's debatable. Nowadays, it's not about a good job or not, it's about a job. It's when you have a job, regardless whether you think it's good or not, it is already a miracle. Because there's so many people out there who lost jobs. So no matter how good or bad it is, you think, it is a miracle. So. But this can only happen because of the COVID situation. A lot of people start realizing that what they have is really precious compared to what they don't have. But before the COVID, the our people especially, remember during the early stage, since Joyce, you worked in the gaming industry, in the early stage, people worked for two years at one company, and then another company is opening a new place, right? Move. And then another company opening a new place. I remember I was telling my brother, my brother from the very beginning until now, he's been working for one company. And now he's the safest because loyalty. I told him in the beginning, don't, because unless it's not good, but if you're happy with your situation, be content. Why? Because this will keep on happening. Is that what you see yourself? Until 20 years from now, you're going to keep on jumping. It doesn't look good on your resume. But now, I think he's got a better resume than me. He's been working for the same company since 2000 and six maybe or i don't know but it's definitely more than 15 years and that's that's really good resume right so 
only in this current situation that we can realize that every little thing matters. That's the reason why God sometimes allows for us to be now. We just learn so that we can see. Not because God's power is not perfect when we are not in our weakest moment, but it's because when we are not in our weakest moment, sometimes it's harder for us to realize that all His ways are perfect. All the little things He does, they're all miracles. When we're not in our weakest moment, when you come home, you look at only white rice and maybe just fried chicken. Maybe you feel, oh, it's only fried chicken, you know? What about other things, you know, in Indonesia, maybe the chili sambal, you know? Um, all, you know, the, the, the little things on the side or whatever, you know? But when you are in your weakest time, even a white rice, you would appreciate so much. It's perfect. Such a perfect day. I come home and there's rice I can eat. So, of course, once again, it doesn't mean that we should settle for less. We should still dream big, and big, and high, but still, we should know that God's power is made perfect when we realize that everything is a blessing, not for us to take things for granted. Okay? His way is perfect, even if we don't see it. Even if at times, going through our situation, uh, it's hard for us to see His way is perfect. Amen? Amen. Let us stand up. So from now, I'm going to challenge you guys, every time you have a very hard situation, yes, you can cry because God wants us to cry, of course. But, I cannot read this. Oh, it's, oh, oh. Soma. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, okay. Soma. Yeah. It, what is this? Right now. Oh, right now. Okay, okay. Okay, sure. We're going to pray for this. So, um, but let me remind you. So, the next time you have your situation, you can cry. But don't always get into the habit of cry, baby, okay? You can cry after. You will have the time, okay? The first thing you need to do is praise Him. You thank Him. Okay? You lose your job, thank Jesus first. It sounds crazy, I know. But trust me, the things that Jesus would do for you, they are all crazy. Okay? So, things bad happening in your life, the first thing you do, let's try. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Then, you can go to your room and will listen to you as well. Amen? And so right now, as we close, let us all also pray for Abel's mother for her stomach. What uh, is, is there a particular thing? thing? No, I just sent the video just uh, this afternoon. My, my sister sent it to me. But uh, what, what is the problem? No, maybe the there's something she ate or no, just uh, only today. Ah, okay, okay. So yeah, just a check if she needs to go to the doctor, yeah, or she yeah. needs to take medicine, okay? Yeah. Let us pray. Let us pray not only for healing, but also for wisdom, so that if she needs to take medicine, then she needs to take the right medicine. Okay, let's pray. Lord in heaven, we thank you for Adel El's mom. Right now, she is feeling unwell with the stomach. Wherever she is right now, you touch her, Lord, and you heal her in the name of Jesus. Yes. And give wisdom also to the family around, Lord, whatever that they need to do, whether to take her to the doctor and whatever medicine that she needs to take so that she can be uh, healed more in, through her situation. We thank you so much, Lord. We want to surrender after El Sma into your hands in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we also want to thank you for all our situations, uh, good or bad times, Lord. We want to thank you and teach us to have a habit of thanking you and praising you for whatever situation we have, even in our weakest moment, Lord Jesus, because we now realize that not all weakest moments in our life have to be negative. Sometimes positive things come out of our negative uh, situations, Lord Jesus. So uh, in this regard, remind us always, Lord, in our weakness, Lord, 
that we need to be content because you are in our Jesus, you are in our Lord. And in our weakness, your power will cover us. In our weakness, your power is made perfect. Not because when we are not weak, your power doesn't cover us or your power is not perfect. You are perfect in many ways, Lord, but it's many times that we are uh, strong and we are able and we are in our highest moment, we tend to forget about the fact that your power cover us and your power is perfect. And we rely more on our strength and our knowledge and our ability. Now, no more, Lord. We need to rely on you. Whether we are weak or we are strong, we have to continue to rely on you, Lord. We thank you so much, Lord. And we thank you and we praise you for all the weaknesses that we have because we know that you're going to work wonders through our weaknesses, showing the world, Lord, just like you, just like you, going to the valley of death, your weakest moment, and you defeated that, Lord Jesus. And that same victory that you have gained, you have given to us, so that in all our weaknesses, Lord, we will be victorious as well, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. My sisters and my brother, let us raise our hands and receive the blessing from the Father in heaven, together with the Lord, peace and joy from our Lord Jesus Christ, and the strength that we receive from the fellowship with the Holy Spirit, who is faithful until Maranatha, he returns the second time. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.